I have a very important question for all my Muslim friends out there. In the Quran, Allah seems to know an awful lot about the children of Israel. O oh, children of Israel, remember my favor wherewith I favored you. O oh, children of Israel, remember my favor wherewith I favored you and how I preferred you to all creatures. Children of Israel, children of Israel, children of Israel, children of Israel. And I will make him, Isa, Jesus, a messenger to the children of Israel, children of Israel, children of Israel, children of Israel. And this verse is interesting because Allah quotes the Talmud, Mishnah Sanhedrin, as a revelation from him. Children of Israel, 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 children of Israel. And we verily did allot unto the children of Israel a fixed abode. We gave unto Moses the scripture, and we appointed it a guidance for the children of Israel. Children of Israel, 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 children of Israel. We verily gave Moses the scripture, so be not ye in doubt of his receiving it. And we appointed it a guidance for the children of Israel. And we verily gave Moses the guidance, and we caused the children of Israel to inherit the scripture. Children of Israel, children of Israel. And verily we gave the children of Israel the scripture, and the command, and the prophethood, and provided them with good things, and favored them above all peoples. Children of Israel, children of Israel, children of Israel. Allah has all kinds of things to say about the children of Israel both positive and negative, sometimes extremely negative. He talks about the children of Israel over and over again like a beating drum. Now for my question. We have dozens of Quran verses about the children of Israel. Where, oh where, does the Quran talk about the children of Palestine? Chapter and verse, where? Exactly. <laughs> Nowhere. Not a single verse, not a single mention, not a peep about the children of Palestine. Why is it all about the children of Israel? Why doesn't Allah so much as acknowledge the children of Palestine or Palestinians or Palestine even once? Not a single solitary shout out. If I didn't know better, which I don't, I might think that Allah never mentions the Palestinians because the Palestinians, as an ethnic group, hadn't been invented yet. And spoiler alert, the Palestinians, as an ethnic group, didn't exist until more than 3,000 years after the children of Israel conquered the Holy Land from the river to the sea. Allah in the Quran has no clue that the children of Palestine, the children of Palestine, the Palestinians existed at all because they didn't, hadn't been invented yet. In fact, you'll only find Palestine mentioned as a place in the Quran if you go to a modern Quran translation like the Hilleli Khan translation, which adds Palestine as commentary in parentheses in verses like Surah 5 verse 21. O oh, my people, enter the Holy Land, Palestine, not in the Arabic, which Allah has assigned to you, and turn not back in flight, for then you will be returned as losers. So, which people are commanded by Allah to enter Palestine and conquer the land? Is he talking to all the Palestinians who wouldn't exist for another 3,000 plus years? Let's read the context and find out. And remember when Musa, Moses, said to his people, i.e. the children of Israel, O oh my people, remember the favor of Allah to you when he made prophets among you, made you kings, and gave you what he had not given to any other among the alamin, mankind and jinn in the past. O oh my people, enter the Holy Land, Palestine, not in the Arabic, which Allah has assigned to you, and turn not back in flight, for then you will be returned as losers. They said, O oh Musa, Moses, 
In it, this holy land, are a people of great strength, and we shall never enter it till they leave it. When they leave, then we will enter. Two men of those who feared Allah and on whom Allah had bestowed his grace, they were Yusha and Caleb, Joshua and Caleb, said, Assault them through the gate, for when you are in, victory will be yours, and put your trust in Allah, if you are believers indeed. The passage continues, but this is part of the story of the children of Israel escaping captivity in Egypt and conquering the land of Canaan, aka the Holy Land, aka what the pagan Romans eventually called Palestine. Now, which people were in the land that would eventually be called Palestine before the children of Israel conquered it? Who were the people who were conquered by the children of Israel. The Canaanites, the most pagan of all pagans. The children of Israel conquered the Canaanites. You've got two options here, my Muslim friends. Get ready to pick one. You can either say that the Canaanites were the Palestinians, in which case Allah ordered the children of Israel to conquer them, or you can say that the Palestinians came later in which case the children of Israel were there long before the Palestinians. So, either the Palestinians were there first because they were the Canaanites, but Allah wanted them conquered by the children of Israel, or the Palestinians came later. Take your pick, but either option completely destroys the stupid, insane propaganda that I hear 487 times a day. The propaganda that I hear every single day is that the Palestinians were always there until the Jews showed up in the 20th century, so the land should be given back to its rightful owners, the Palestinians. On a side note, I totally reject the ridiculous claim that if one group was on a piece of land before another group, you have to give the land back to the earlier group. And you reject it too, my Muslim friends. If you really believed that land has to be given back to people who had it at some earlier stage, you'd be giving back 49 Muslim countries to the people who were there before Islam tried to conquer the world. You'd be giving back Mecca because it was conquered. You'd be giving back Constantinople because it was conquered. And you would definitely be giving back the Temple Mount behind me. But you'll never give back anything because you don't really believe in this moral principle you made up. Why do you pretend to believe a rule that you made up when you obviously don't believe it? Let's face it, the reason is that some of you really hate Jews and you'll say absolutely anything, no matter how false, no matter how insane, no matter how ridiculous, no matter how hypocritical as long as it helps you manipulate morons into supporting your plans to wipe out Jews. The most amazing part to me here is that you'll even contradict your own God and your own prophet for your political agenda. Your God and your prophet say that the children of Israel conquered that land. You say, no, Allah and Muhammad are lying. The Palestinians were there, and then the Jews came and stole the land from them in the 20th century. To all you Muslims out there who keep babbling about the Palestinians being the originals, congratulations, you're apostates now. You reject what Allah says in the Quran because you don't worship Allah. You worship a political agenda. A Muslim is someone who submits to what Allah and Muhammad say. You don't submit to what Allah and Muhammad say. You submit to Hamas and social media jihadis and neo-Nazis and whatever brainwashed college group you're in. And that, not according to me, according to your God and your prophet, is the unforgivable sin of shirk. As for your thoroughly idolatrous pagan political agenda. Do everyone a favor and just stop. Listen to the song, You Can't Always Get What You Want by the Rolling Stones on repeat until the message finally sinks in. You're not getting Israel. It's not happening. Not today, not tomorrow, not during Ramadan, not for Christmas, definitely not for Hanukkah. 
Not on a boat, not with a goat, not in a house, not with a mouse. Take the L and do something constructive with your lives. Might I suggest using some of that high octane protest energy of yours to call on Hamas to release the hostages and surrender.